majority of the cases go unreported. Kathy Stevens was a victim of marital rape. She's also the first woman to prosecute a man for this crime in the state of California and win. She's here today to share her story with us in the hopes that she may be able to help other women. Kathy, thank you for being here today. Uh, let me start off by just asking you, why, why did your husband rape you? What were the circumstances? Well, um, rape, especially spousal rape, is a type of abuse. And he wanted to control me, you know, through the sexual assault. Um, it was, it kind of went in stages. Like, first there was the battery, and then there was the mental abuse and that type of control, and then it went to the sexual abuse. So in other words, there were three stages. Physical abuse. Right. Uh, mental abuse. Uh, what do you mean when you say mental abuse? Oh, like degrading, um, like, uh, you know, telling me that I can never do anything right. You're no right. good. You're, right. you're totally destroying your, your, your confidence and everything. And then finally, the sexual abuse. Right. At the time of the rape, were you having normal relations with your husband, or...? Well, it depends on what you call normal, mm -hmm. you know. Um, he kind of got overactive with his... his with sex. his drive. Yeah, and um, plus, when, you, when you're getting abuse, you know, the mental abuse, the physical mm -hmm. abuse, it's hard to feel love, yes. you know, as far as sexual... Did love. this happen uh, only once? No, it happened three times altogether. Over a, how long a period of time? Oh, a year, about a year. What was your reaction the first time? Um, well, he told me he'd never do it again. And then he said uh, that, you know, he just said that he'd never do it again. Mm -hmm. And I believed him. Do you have children? Yes, I do. I have three children. Was that uh, a consideration in your decision to stay? Because the question always comes no. up, my gosh, they beat you, mentally abuse you, and then no. finally rape you, why don't you leave? Well, the children were not gaining anything from the relationship. Mm -hmm. I mean, if anything at all, they were um, getting more harm out of that relationship. My oldest boy was getting very violent and very uncontrollable. Um, by the time I left, you know, I had to bring him out of the violence, you know. Which psychologists say is quite common in abusive situations. Right. So you accepted his plea. He said he wasn't going to do it again. Right. How long after that uh, did the second episode um, occur? Probably about, I'd say, four months. Same situation? Well, it was, um, yeah, pretty similar situation. And what was your reaction to that the second time? Um, I left. That's the first time I went to a shelter that I went to. Is this a shelter for abused right. women? Battered women, right. And, uh, because I had been battered also at the same time. And when I went to the shelter, I didn't tell them about the rape. Yeah. So you went to the shelter, and uh, obviously there was a reconciliation. Um, well, in a sense, he had said that he was going uh, down south to Stockton and that uh, he wanted to see the kids one more time. So. I said, okay, so I brought the kids, and then he never left, and then he started going to counseling. And so I thought that he was going to, you know, shape up. And each time you really thought it wouldn't happen again? Yeah. I, you know, I mean, like the second time that it happened again, I said, you said that you would never do this again. You promised you would never do this again. Was he suffering from lack of ego, of an ego problem in his job, in his work, what, what kind of a... He never, he was never employed for more than eight months at a time. So he had a real problem right. to begin with. He um, grew up in a really bad home life with a lot of abuse, you know. How long had you known him before you were married? Um, not very long. You mean, because we did live together before we mm -hmm. got married, um, probably about a month. So you really had no idea what kind right. of relationship it really, was really going to be. What were the, the, the circumstances surrounding his arrest? Because generally, police tend to treat these things as right. domestic uh, spats and really stay away right. from them. They the officer that handled um, the case was really excellent because he had worked with the shelter before. And um, he got the information he needed, you know, real quick, and he sent an officer over and arrested him right I on see. the spot. 
Because what, what generally would have happened? What, what, what generally does well, happen? They, they, they um, will take the information, file a report, mm -hmm. send it to the DA, and see if the DA will decide to prosecute. So yours was not a typical situation, right. but fortunately, uh, he was arrested in your right. case and charged. What was his sentence? Um, he got 240 days, which is part of a three-year probation term. And um, the probation also stipulated that he get counseling. And he was charged with what? With the spousal rape. Spousal uh, rape. The original charges, uh, he pled guilty to the spousal rape. Mm. Uh, I remember in the, in the write-out case that was very famous, the couple in Oregon, mm -hmm. the first, I guess, known uh, suit for uh, charges of rape, right. that the jury acquitted him, and they said if we'd only been able to to charge him with assault, we could do that mm -hmm. because we really had trouble with the rape charge. But right. in your case, it worked. Well, because he pled guilty, mm -hmm. um, they had so much evidence. I mean, I told him where everything was. I told him, you know, which room everything was at. Plus, he was um, passed out in bed at the time, and I told him exactly what he was going to be wearing when they got there, and that's the way everything was. All so right, Kathy. Was, We'll take a short pause, and we're going to learn more about marital rape and what its victims can do in just a moment. I'm back with Kathy Stevens, the first woman in the state of California to prosecute a man for marital rape and win. Joining us now is Laura X, president of the National Clearinghouse on Marital Rape. Laura, we heard Kathy describe why her husband raped her for control, uh, dominance in the relationship. Is that generally the case? Very much so. It's the same kinds of motivations that you find with any rapist. It's uh, someone who wants to achieve a feeling of power by completely humiliating and degrading and taking over someone else's life for a period of time. Are, are most of the women that are raped by their husbands, are they also battered? Do they also go through the, the abused stage and the mental uh, abuse stage? Well, one of the ways of mentally abusing is to say, it's your duty. You have to do whatever I have to do, do, whatever I ask you to do, whatever I tell you to do. They don't usually say ask. And that's part of it. In other words, to keep badgering them about how they are lesser, lesser people, the women mm -hmm. that they're married to. Then also, I think there are husbands who have told me, I, I force my wife because she likes it. That's what his excuse is. But I would never lay a hand on her. I think it's very much part of almost all battering situations. We've found that it's about 80% of the battering syndrome that goes on in apparently 60% of adult women in this country. But there are also husbands who threaten violence, threaten uh, death, or threaten to leave, threaten not to feed the children, mm -hmm. whatever. So women submit under a variety of terrible it's kinds of It's just easier to submit than take the possibility of the violence. If yes, I, I think time. that's the most, you mentioned the write out case, and the thing that's most crucial in that case, the defense attorney kept saying that because she submitted to sex after he beat her and that this was regular, that, that she was into kinky sex, mm -hmm. as opposed to understanding that well, one that submits the, to sex to save the, one's life. That was the problem with the jury making that determination on whether it had been a solid or whether it I should have said that. The jury really had a problem. The judge said he wanted straight acquittal. Or nothing. Or first degree. Okay, first degree is 20 years. And we've reduced our uh, penalties in California in order to be able to get convictions. Why don't most women just leave? Well, I think that question, I hate that question, I have to be honest, because it's a way of saying the wife should be further punished. The punishment really should come to the husband. The society should say, this is something we don't condone. We do not condone violence against anyone in this society. To have a woman get a divorce is a, is a, she has to lose status with her kids, with her religious community, with the PTA, with his family, with her family. She's, uh, we're all, all women are one man away from welfare. It's definitely, a divorce is a terrible loss for a woman and a trauma for her. 
And my also, also my concern is that he's a rapist, he's going to do it to other women. We've had several convictions now in the state of California where my favorite is that the last one we just had, the previous wives came up and th in the courtroom and thanked the third wife who had finally gotten the man charged. Oh, he had been a repeater, in other words. Yes, well, rapists are. It's the most recidivist, most repeating crime there so is. So in other words, if a, rape, if, if a man will rape his wife, he will rape a stranger? Absolutely. For the same kinds of motivations. This is his own need to, to have control over other people, and the wife is the most handy one. Well, you know, I guess when I, I said, why don't most wives leave, I, that question is, is more than just what it seems to be on the surface. It's the, it's, it's the question everyone asks, I know. Yeah, but it, it, it really addresses itself to, it's really black and white at, at the moment with our laws and everything, isn't it? You either stay there and continue with this, or you But you see, you if she leaves, out. she comes after and her, breaks into her house and does it again. At least when she's staying with him, she knows where he is most of the time and is not living in fear. Also, if she has children, the judge will not allow her to leave the state because of his rights to visitation. If the wife is battered, you, you can't use that as a reason to deny the father visitation to the children. So she is risking her life constantly. It's an, a total oh, lose-lose situation. A totally what? Lose-lose situation. Yes, if that's she what stays, I'm... She's, she's in violent jeopardy, and if she leaves, she's so in violent So what we need are laws. Yes, and a whole change of the way people feel about women. <laughs> what are the current laws? Well, in 10 states now, I'm happy to say, I ran the campaign in California just two years ago, and we were the fifth state to change our law to make marital rape a crime. And now there's 10 as of last week in Florida. That was the most recent one. What, is the, what do you see the, the biggest difficulty in establishing marital rape? Your, Kathy's case was obviously aided by the fact that she knew the officer involved. That's true. One of the things that's important is that there be shelters for women everywhere. The shelters and the rape crisis centers are working very closely with educating the police and educating the public. And if you educate the public, then you're educating p potential jurors who are notoriously prejudiced against rape victims always. They, they shun the woman if they're a woman because of the stigma that only... only uh, Bad girls get raped, mm -hmm. even by strangers, and the men identify with the rapists. That's just a, it's a very hard thing to be. There aren't any other genders to put on juries. So that really is the biggest, biggest problem facing us. I think so. It was a basic public opinions. education, yes. And you have to change the opinions in order to have the public pressure their legislators to change the laws as well. Also, I would assume it would be much, much more helpful if the police could be a little more sympathetic toward... That's what I mean about rape crisis centers and shelters. It's those women working with the police that begin to change the police attitudes. Mm -hmm. Or in three states, we've, I mean, it was three uh, cities, Oakland, Los Angeles, and New York, we've had to sue the police in order to force them to take the law seriously and battery to go out and uh, to deal with those issues on a serious basis. What's the easiest way, what's the simplest way to find a victim shelter? Well, victims, one of the problems is victims. that so many of the shelters have been run with CETA workers and VISTA volunteers and so forth, and the, the federal funding has been cut from that, so communities really have to organize them. But usually, if you call any of your information, 911 or anything like that, if your community has a shelter, they certainly know exactly where it is, and the police know where it is. Mm -hmm. So if you call the police, the police and, and the Rape Crisis Center people work very closely together, and the hospitals also, they need to. Kathy, you, I didn't ask you, you are divorced from your husband. Right. Uh, if you had to give any advice to anyone out there who might be going through the same thing, what would it be? Um, that the situation isn't going to end, you know, even if the husband says, well, I won't ever do it again. It's going to keep happening because he can't control it and she definitely can't control it. I mean, there's no way she's going to be able to control it. So she needs to get out if she can, you know, through a shelter, um, any way that she can get out. She needs to get out. Um, you can't express any more of a <laughs> need than that. All right. Thank you very much, Kathy. Thank you, Laura. Thank very you. Very much for being with us. If you'd like more information or assistance, you can send a stamped, self-addressed envelope to the National mm -hmm. Clearinghouse on Marital Rape, 2325 Oak Street, Berkeley, California, 94708. Thank you again. The world's most expensive...